Oh, I do like to be beside the seaside. Oh, I do like to be beside the sea. Oh, I do like to stroll along the prom, 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 where the brass plants play. Italy, um, um, um. So just let me be beside the seaside. I'll be beside myself with glee. Okay, so we've now completed the main body of our blanket and it's time to do the envelope border. Now I did think for a long while about um, design, various different designs for the borders including like fish and seagulls and things. Um, but to be honest, I thought looking at the, there was so much going on in the main blanket that I actually thought a plain border is best. Okay, so I have got here a hook that is half a millimetre smaller than the hook I was using for the main blanket so if you were using your four millimetre hook you'll now have a three and a half I've actually got a 3.25 because I was using 3.75 for my blanket okay so we've got our smaller hook that's just to keep that border just a little bit firmer to stop it getting too wobbly you'll also notice I've got some markers so I've got these pale blue ones one for each corner because we're going to be marking each corner chain because if we're only working one chain in each corner and sometimes especially when on the um, double crochet round sometimes they can be a little bit tricky to find so if we put that in we'll always know where our corner is and then we're going to need one more for the slip stitch we work at the end of the round but I'll explain them as we go along okay so for the border we were working this first round using our C5 or X3 color you can like I say you can use any colors you wish but that's what the color packs the quantities that the yarn in the color packs were just were calculated on okay so I've got that now we need our blanket now obviously I haven't I think as I said in previous videos I haven't actually got um I haven't got mine isn't exactly the same as yours because I've just done the bits that I needed to to show you in the video so I've actually finished with the um beach house there okay and because my seagulls are so close to the top I have actually added an extra row just on mine Added an extra row of um, double crochets back loop double crochets at the top there which you it's, it's optional okay so you can start in any corner you wish now to make the um, well, I haven't tied these off yet there's another thing I've got to show you actually first um, to, but to make um, the instructions work I had to pick a corner so I'm telling you to start at this sort of right at the end where you would have ended your your blanket so the last row of the blanket right at the end there so you can then work down this edge but once you get to know how to do it, you can start in any corner you like but yes before we actually make our border what we do need to do well what I always do is tidy up my ends before I make the border now I know some people say they find it easier to keep these ends out of the way and they're like this and if that's you then fine you don't need to tie them off straight away personally I find it easier when they're tied together and they're about an inch long two or three centimeters long I find it easier to keep them out of the way because I find these bits get stuck below when I'm picking them up but it's entirely up to you what you do but what we will need to do before we seal the border is just tie them together you can tie them in pairs or to be a little bit quicker just grab I grab three so twos or three and just tie them together now don't pull them too tight you need to leave a little bit of space here because if you pull it really tight you can again make it a little bit more difficult to get into that stitch at the beginning okay so whatever way you do it tie them together now or later but I, I prefer to do them now so Okay, so we'll go around and do that, and when you have done, you'll just cut them all to, say, around about an inch, sort of two or three centimetres. Not too short. If you cut them too short, there is always a chance they'll fray. But like this, they're nice and secure, and there's no way that's going to come undone when it's inside the border. Okay? So what I'll do, I'll actually get started now. So what we do to get started... 
as we have been all along, I start with a standing double crochet, but I'm not actually going to put a slip knot in this time because I'm working all the way in the round. I'm going to be joining into it at the end. And personally, I don't like having that extra knot there then. So all I'll do is, if you remember right back to when we started our blanket, I usually just twist it like that. Okay. And then what we need to do is we need to start right in this very last chain on that very last row okay and we've got <laughs> one standing double crochet one chain one standing double crochet okay so you can already see it's very difficult to see just looking at it which one of those is the chain so what we do is just grab our stitch marker and just pop that in that front loop of that chain so now we know where our corner is so to work down the side all we're now going to do if you can see there we've got our chains we're just going to insert our hook and work our double crochet okay so this is the equivalent really i suppose of the slip stitch round if you were doing it um the sort of traditional way for overlay mosaic so rather than working stitch slip stitches just into the edge of our product, our product, our project, we are going to be working double crochets into these chains. Okay. And if you notice, what you should find as you're working, one chain will be into one colour, and the next one will usually be a different colour. Okay, so that's a way of checking that you haven't missed any. So carry on along this edge until you get to the bottom and I will come back and show you what we do in the corners. Oopsie, getting tangled up. Okay, so I'm now almost to the end of this edge of the blanket. Um, and you'll see I've just tidied up the rest of my ends as well. There. So just got one more chain on the side to work into. And now we're right down to our cast on edge. So there is our chain at the bottom there. So this is where we're now going to be working our next corner. So that will be one double crochet, one chain one double crochet all into the front loop of that chain so yeah i probably should have mentioned before actually you're working into the front loops of these chains you're not working around the chains i mean you could work around the chains um but that will make it a little bit bulkier and also what you then find you probably want to start on the wrong side because you'll end up with a sort of a line when you work around the chains again on the other side that will then put like a little sort of a, a line around the edge which you may want but but yeah working into the chains not around them so as i said we don't remember to mark that corner chain and now what we're going to do along the bottom edge and this is why i said to do said to do a chain rather than a foundation double crochet so you had um this chain at the end where with the standard foundation double crochet that'll just be the double crochets all the way along you wouldn't have the chain um and also working into the that first foundation row into the back bump so you had the two loops there because we're going to, have to be working into this loop the front loop here when we do the right side and then we're going to do another whole border on the back and we'll be using the other loop for that okay so that was the reason for working into the back bump okay so now we've done that we've just got to like a double crochet into that front loop of every stitch along the bottom here okay so just like so so do that right until you get to that chain at the other end again and i'll meet you there Okay, so I've now got to this last chain 
at the bottom edge of the blanket so as before it's just one double crochet one chain one double crochet there and remember to pop our marker into that front loop there of that corner chain and then all we're going to do on this edge is still working into the front loop of the chain so we are just going all the way up this edge again okay so carry on and do that when you get to the top edge um, obviously the corner will be the same and then you're just going to be working into the front loops along that top edge again so do all of that and I will see you when you get to the end of this round which is obviously also the start of this round and I'll show you what we do there okay so I've now just got one more stitch left to work on this top edge of my blanket there we go I've now completed this first round now if you wanted to just you could if you want to just do carry on with exactly the same color and just do several rows of single crochet double crochets I'm talking in UK terms here several rounds of double crochets and if you were going to do that you wouldn't be fastening off now what I would do for that is I would slip stitch into there so right where we started okay and then pop that little marker in there the reason being that then tells you where your last stitch is going to be worked on the next round and then say if I was going to do that I would just do like effectively a turning chain so that doesn't count as a stitch and then you'll be working starting with your corner straight in there one double crochet one chain one double crochet and then move the marker up and carry on down just working a back loop double crochet in every stitch that's if you wanted to do that now to make things a little bit quicker and also a little bit more decorative rather than doing several rounds of a single crochet well I, double crochet <laughs> i get used to saying that because a lot of people um and more people use the us terms than the uk but no double crochet so we're not going to do that i'm going to pull that back and take that marker out of there okay so we're back where we started there okay so we now got to the end of that round so what we're going to do we're actually going to we could end with a slip stitch and fasten off but to make it neater um, especially because we're going to be working into the back loops on the next round to make it in, we're going to actually do an invisible to join so what we're going to do if you don't know how to do that I'm just gonna there we go cut that end off and then we pull that end out so we've now just got one strand of yarn sticking out of the middle of our last stitch then you pick up your tapestry needle thread that on okay and then what we're going to do we're not going to insert our needle here where we would if we were doing a slip stitch because if we do that we're going to be creating an extra stitch what we're going to do is basically replace this top loops of this first stitch with another one so I'll go around like so so we're actually going to insert our needle there so right next to our marker marking that corner chain okay then don't pull it through too tight because the idea is we're now going to make this loop that we're now creating look just like the others okay so don't pull it too tight now you insert your needle back into that middle of that stitch where that yarn came out if we flip over you also go down you see there's this extra loop there put it down through that too okay and then say just pull it tight enough that it disappears and it now looks like all of the others see that's why it's an invisible join okay so what I'm now going to do I'm going to pull this one tight that, that we started with I'm just going to insert that in there okay Again, don't pull any of this too tight we just go around like so what we can now do as this is all going to disappear into the border anyway we can just gently tie these two ends together okay 
and then just trim them off like so okay so that is round one of the border done finishing with that invisible join okay so round two of the border um we are going to be working trebles now so i'll be nice and quick just going to do i think like three three rounds of trebles just to um frame or blanket now you can start start this round in any corner you wish um probably would say um just a way of keeping it sort of a bit neater don't start in the same one as you did you finished the last one so i'm just gonna start at the other end of the final row of the blanket okay so we are using our c4 or x1 or whatever color you wish but say if you're using one of the color packs these are the colors that i used to um when working out yarn requirements so again we're going to start with a standing stitch but this time it's a standing treble so again i'm not going to put the slip knot on i'm just going to twist it round and then you'll need to do yarn over again because it's a treble okay then we're going to go to our marked corner chain here I'm going to work into the back of that and there is our standing treble okay then we've got one corner chain and then because we're working trebles we're going to actually work two stitches in there now so each corner is actually going to be two trebles one chain two trebles the only one that I haven't done that on is this first one because I want to end as close to this corner chain as possible at the end of the round because we're going to be carrying on okay so we're going to complete this first corner right at the end so take the marker out of there and pop it in there okay so now it's nice and simple we are just going to be working trebles into the back loop of all our stitches Okay, so do this all the way along and I'll see you when you get to that next corner and here we are so I'm now up to the next corner that marked chain so as I said before I think it's gonna be into that back loop of that chain two trebles Ooh. Two trebles, one chain, and then two more trebles. So make sure you don't work into the chain space because if you do, you'll get a little sort of hole in the corner you know, where you worked in the space. But by working into the actual chain, you can see you can hardly see where the corner is. So that keeps it nice, nice and close. And then it's a case of again just working back loop trebles all the way down okay so carry on around like so and I'll see you when you get to the end of this round which was also obviously the beginning of the round okay so I've now got right the way around just done that last treble back loop treble on that round and remember we've just like i said at the start we've got to complete this first corner so one more goes into that chain from the beginning of the round okay so if we were going to be changing color now we would treat it just like we did at the end of round one where we would cut the yarn and do our invisible join inserting our needle through there okay so that's if you wanted to change color but for this we're actually going to carry on and do the next round in the same color so we don't want to cut it off really so what we're going to do we're going to slip stitch there okay don't pull it too tight because you are going to be working into that now i don't know if you remember but when we when i got to the end of round one i explained that if this was a round of double crochets you would be popping your marker in there because that's where the last stitch would be worked on the next round because we're dealing with trebles and we're working two two trebles one chain two trebles in each corner rather than one double crochet one chain one double crochet what we actually need to do is now slip stitch into this next chain okay so we're going to slip stitch actually into there 
and that is where we're going to put our marker because that's where the next stitch is going to be worked okay then we have got four chains so this counts first three are our treble in the corner the next one is our mark chain okay so then it's going to be two trebles okay so we're still working two trebles one chain two trebles in each corner except on this final corner we do the last one so the last treble for that corner is going to be worked into our marked slip stitch there does that make sense so I'm going to pop that there in that top chain to mark where our corner is all right so now it's just like we did before we're going to carry on exactly the same and we're just going to do a round of trebles into the back loop okay so and then remember in each marked corner chain to work two trebles one chain two trebles let's so carry on and do that and i will see you when you get back back round again okay so i've now got all the way around my blanket and i've now got to that marked slip stitch from the start of the round so we're just going to work our last back loop treble into there okay so now the pattern tells you to join with a slip stitch into there okay and then we will be slip stitching into that chain again and then you start with your four chain okay so that's if you want to now do another round there so the pattern is written for three of the plain rounds of trebles what i'm going to do because basically for my blanket um i've only made a small one anyway and there's no need to do an extra one for me i think it's going to keep it in better proportions i'm going to pull that back so basically what you'll do if you're following the pattern you'll repeat round three that we've just done and then round four i mean if you want to make it wider you can just keep repeating this as much as you like and on the very last round you do rather than joining with a slip stitch what we're going to do is that invisible join again okay so cut that off pull the yarn through and just do this once more together okay so remember we're not inserting here as we effectively would if we were doing our slip stitch put it put the needle right next to our so it's basically sort of in our mark chain like so okay pull it through remembering not to pull it too tight and then insert back into the middle of that stitch and down through that extra loop at the back there okay don't pull it too tight and then just weave the end in so what I'm gonna do just take that down like so away from the very edge remembering not to pull anything too tight because we don't want to bunch anything up and then we can just weave that in go back some forwards a few times and what I'll probably do actually is leave that one there pick up our starting end here We've got to make sure these are all nice and secure so we'll just go along to get next to there we go next to that one again don't pull anything too tight and i'm just going to tie a double knot in that okay so those ends aren't going anywhere and we can chop off like so so then obviously that'll all get hidden inside the border so that is i've now completed border one what we need to do is leave these the markers that are in our corner chains leave them in place but we don't need this one anymore okay so that's how that corner looks and all the others are like so so now all we've got to do now is basically repeat what we've just done but on the back okay so now we have completed border one we need to do exactly the same thing again 
but on the back so for border two so if you can see here i'm now actually at a different corner again so i'm at the bottom edge of my blanket remember i actually started with some shells from on the seashore online so what we're going to do when we do the top and bottom you'll notice there's just hopefully you can see there's just this one loop of all of those starting or ending stitches again so that's where we'll be working our stitches at the top and bottom and then we'll still be working into the chains along the side okay so i have now got my c3 color or x3 i mean obviously you can use whatever colors you want and we're starting again as we did before in this so you should hopefully be able to see there's the corner chain because that's the one we worked all our stitches in before so just pick up oh, there we go that front loop there one double crochet one chain one double crochet and then we are gonna put our marker in the front loop of that chain okay so we know where our corner is so we'd say we're doing exactly the same as we did on the front we're just now doing it on the back now it can be a little trickier to see the the chains on the back because we've already worked into them but if you give it a stretch you should hopefully you'll be able to see where they are so again just work into that sort of front loop of the chains okay We're just going to pick that up. Oh, gone into two there. It doesn't matter too much if you're going to two, but when you're using a totally different colour like we are here, it might show through if you work into both loops. But hopefully, it won't. You're just picking up. There we go, that front loop. So, we'll have a look at the front. There we are. You see, you can't see anything through like that. I mean, if you find are finding it difficult with the working into the chains, you can work around those around the chains. But as I said before, that will make it a little bit chunkier, and you will also see a line on the other side. I'll just show you what I mean. So I've now gone right around that chain there. Okay. So if I do that for a couple. It's definitely easier to do but when we turn it over there we are you see you get a line showing through so if you do want to work around the chains what I would always suggest is that you actually work the back border first so then when you come to do the front you'll have this basically this extra line would then be just on the back of your blanket and then the front would look nice and sort of clean like so all right but as i said that will make it a bit chunkier so i don't like to do that i'm just going to pull those three back so it may be a teensy bit of a fiddle just work along say so just into that front loop there and then other than that basically like i said it's exactly the same as border one so you can carry on now and complete border two and I will come back and show you how we join the two together okay so I've now completed border two say as on mine I've only got the two rounds in the um the sort of the of the trebles there because um I just made it smaller because my blanket's smaller um but however many rounds you've got you, you should have two borders the same size and what we now need to do is you can choose any corner you like so I'm just back up here at the top the end of the blanket we're just now going to join them together so you've got your markers in those corner chains each time so keep them in until you've worked into them and if we've done our borders correctly what we should find is whenever we get to the next corner we will always get to the same one at the same time okay so grabbing your c1 or x1 yarn or indeed whatever color you want to join with we're going to start again with a standing double crochet and because we're working in the round and going in the same like i don't usually have that knot at the start of this up to you if you do but i am just as i've done on all the others 
when we've been going in the round on the board I'm just going to twist that round okay so then what we need to do we're working into the back loops of either the chains or the stitches all the way around just to sort of carry on with the pattern when we just get this little ridge there okay so I've now inserted my hook into the corner chain on the front border and then if we go to the back one there I'm going to insert it there so it's like the it's the it would be the back loop as it was worked but it's the so we've got the back loop on the front and effectively the front loop that you can see for the back but we're working into those inner loops each time okay and there is our double crochet so we're not going to put any chains in the corners when we're now joining it because we're not doing anything else afterwards we're just going to work two more double crochets through the same two stitches okay one two and then all we're going to do is go around the blanket picking up that the inner loops of both the front border and i've got to try and keep my finger out of the way and the back border to join them together okay so that is that so all we'll do okay try to keep my fingers out of the way I'm going to just be tucking these edges in I mean you probably won't see them hardly because you if you've got the wider border but because I've made mine in a little narrow they just need gently tucking in as we go around okay so that's it so go around like so joining them together and then when you get to the corners it's just like we did here we're working three double crochets into the marked corner chains okay so i've now got down to the next corner and yay i've got to do the mark stitches or the mark chains at exactly the same time for each one so all we do then as i said three double crochets into those mark chains to get us around the corner and then what i forgot to show you before is obviously we don't actually need these markers anymore so we can take them out okay so then it's a case of just as before carrying on around okay so i've now actually got most of the way around um my joining my blanket um so i've now joined three sides and i kept thinking oh, well, i'll find one where i've slightly slipped up on the stitches but actually i hadn't um, <laughs> so i've now got right say around to the last sort of corner that i can show you and i've just kind of forced forced it so i can show you where we're not quite the same on the front and the back border so if you see i've now got it um so we are up to the corner chain on the front border but we've still got one stitch left on the back so if you find yourself in that sort of position there's absolutely no need to sort of frog it back or anything what we would do what i would do then is just still work into the next chain there so do all of your sort of fudging in that corner chain so we're in that corner chain on the front border and that last stitch before the corner chain on the back and then what we'll do we'll just now do our corner anyway so we, instead of having three stitches through both the front and the back board we're actually going to have four on the front okay so if you just do something like that no one will ever see the difference and that's just the sort of thing you can do if you do find and if it's the other way around you might then have three on the front and four on the back yeah so if you got to the back ahead of the front then do it that way but there we go no one would ever know okay so i will now see you when we get to the end of the border just to sort of show you how to sort of finish it off nice and neat and tidily okay so i've now got all the way around back where i started from so i've cut off my my yarn now and we're just going to do another invisible join just like we've been doing before so but we do, obviously this time we've just got to be a little bit neater on the back so i've now Pulled that through there so I've just got my single strand sticking out of that last stitch and as always thread it on your tapestry needle 
You can pull that one down tight out of the way because we're not working into that, remember. We're going to actually insert our needle there, so into the next stitch because we're replacing this top loop. Pull that through, not too tight. Back into the middle again and then also through that back loop there. And just, there we go, pull it so it just looks like all of the other stitches. So then all we're going to do on the back is, get this end out of the way, we'll do, we're going to have to do the same with both ends, we're just now going to sort of work. Make sure you don't come through to the front like so, we don't want to, don't want to do that. So just like weave in and out here. Okay, so there's nothing come through the front, pull that out, and again make sure you don't pull it too tight because we don't want to bunch anything up. And then what you can do to kind of disguise if you want to help hold it in, if you can see the um, front loops there, the way they shape, so we could actually just come back like so, and again. There we go, and it all gets disguised with those front loops there. And then probably just come back again. And then I'm going to just poke it through there. So again, make sure you haven't come through the front so there's no none of the other colour there. We'll pull that through like that. Take that off the needle. And then you just pull it ever so slightly tighter as you cut it. And then stretch it out it's all disappeared so that's all nice and invisible on the back there so now all you need to do is exactly the same idea with this end and then we're finished oh i do like to be beside the seaside oh i do like to be beside the sea Oh, I do like to stroll along the prom, 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 where the brass plants play, diddly-um, pom, pom.